will you come with me quickly to the book of Revelation? Revelation, the first chapter. From the third to the sixth verse, we'll be reading a lot. Amen. But hopefully it does a deep work in your heart and in your spirit. Amen. It says, blessed is he that read it and they that hear the words of this prophecy. And keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Tell your neighbor, the time is at hand. John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you, and peace from him which is, and which was, and which is to come, and from the seven spirits which are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness. Somebody say faithful. And the first, somebody say the first, begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth and unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests unto God and his father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Come with me to verse 8 of Revelation, the first chapter. He says, I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is, which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. Then jump with me again to verse 11, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first, somebody say the first, and the last, what thou seest, write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, unto Smyrna, unto Pegamos, unto Tytara, unto Sardis, unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. Jump with me again to verse 17. Of Revelation, the first chapter. It says, and when I saw him, tell your neighbor you will see him. Yeah. Tell another neighbor you will have an encounter with him. He said, when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me saying, fear not, I am the first. Somebody say the first. Right. And the last, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. Chapter 2, verse 1. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus, write these things, said he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, and who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Tabernacle of glory, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou cannot bear them which are evil and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not and hast found them liars and hast borne and hast patience and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Somebody say first love. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works. Somebody say first works. Or else I will come unto thee quickly, and remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh, will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Here ended the reading of God's holy word. Somebody say amen. This morning, I want to share with you the importance of putting God first. 
As we read from this sacred text, which I believe that any time we read, we are blessed because it's part of the promise that goes with the book of Revelation. That any time we read these words and we keep the things that are written therein, we walk in God's blessing. Tell your neighbor, you are blessed already. You are blessed already. You are blessed by what you've heard already. You are already blessed. If we close the service right now, you will live with a blessing. If you believe that, put your hands together and give God praise. And so, as we read, you see something coming up again and again and again. And it's the word first. It's the fact that God wants to take first place and to help his people, his church, his disciples, those that have a covenant relationship to understand that he is first place in everything and in our lives. He begins by telling us that Jesus Christ is a faithful witness and he's the first begotten of the dead. Nobody until Jesus had the power to lay down their life and raise it up again. Jesus Christ is before all things. He is greater than all things. He precedes all things. He is the first. Somebody say the first. It's very important to understand that when it comes to the order of things, it's very important to put first things first. For example, there are things you can do unless some things are done. When you wake up in the morning, you don't eat before you brush your teeth. Can I talk to somebody this morning? It's very important to understand that if, if you are putting on a singlet, you don't put it on top of your suit. You wear it first, and then you wear your suit on it. Am I talking to somebody this morning? And so, there are things that are foundational. There are things that are basic. There are things that move with the order of how God wants things done. And the first rule is to appreciate that Jesus Christ is number one. That Jesus Christ is the first. That Jesus Christ is the most important component of your life and your destiny. He says, I am the Alpha and Omega. Nothing begins without me. As a matter of fact, the beginning began in him. He said, I am your beginning and I am your end. Life is very interesting and sometimes you will never be able to predict the end of a man. But he says, I'm not only your beginning, I also know your end. I'm the Alpha, I'm the Omega. He repeats it again. I'm the first and I'm the last. When it comes to the things of God, when it comes to the things of the kingdom, when it comes to our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, it's the first. It's the most important. It is priority. We live in a world of so many voices, so many competing forces, so many deities, but Jesus Christ stands as tall among them all. He is in a class of his own. He's unlike any other God. He's sovereign. He's great. He's awesome. He's mighty. There is no God like him from everlasting to everlasting. He is God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's very easy for people to put all kinds of gods together. But Jesus Christ is the only one that said I have the power to lay my life down and pick it back up again. Everything he said is yea and amen. And he's still speaking to the church today. He's still speaking. He's the one that walks among the seven candlesticks. The Lord of forces. 
that wants to take his place in our heart and in our lives. But as we put him first, as we honor him, as we glorify him, as we prioritize him, he will change everything in our lives. If you believe it, put your hands together and give God praise and tell your neighbor, put him first, put him first, put him first, put him first. first." In Matthew 6, 33, the Bible declares that, but seek ye first. Before you do anything, before you attempt to give attention to anything in your life, the first thing to seek is the kingdom. Not even your job. Not your marriage. Not your health. If you seek first, somebody say first, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things shall be added unto you. I don't know what you are seeking for. I don't know what you are chasing for. But God wants you to seek first the kingdom. Pastor Greg, a lot of people are spending their time seeking things. Instead of seeking first the kingdom. The thing you are seeking for. The promotion you are looking for, the recognition you are looking for, the influence you are looking for, the power you are looking for, is an addition. It's an added benefit. It's like when you work for an airline, you have the opportunity to fly free. It's not your salary, it's a benefit. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And forget not his benefits. Who forgives all thine iniquities and heals all your diseases. Is somebody hearing me? Crowns your life with loving kindness and tender mercies. When you serve the Lord, healing is a benefit. Forgiveness is a benefit. Long life is a benefit. Deliverance is a benefit. And so this morning, God wants to center us. God wants to reposition us. Because this year is not going to be like last year. We have not just entered into a new year. We have entered into a new decade. And for some of you under the sound of my voice, by 2030, you will be looking more blessed, more prosperous, more healthy. Are you hearing me? Than you are looking right now. Some of you, God will give you grace to look 20 years younger, 15 years younger. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The glory of the latter house is going to be greater than the former. You think you know God? You haven't seen anything yet. As we read the account in the book of Revelation, we see that the same John that used to put his head on the chest of Jesus Christ, that same John in the book of Revelation was so traumatized by the experience that he fell down as dead. The same person that was so close that even when Jesus was dying, handed the mother over to him, that same man could not behold him. The Bible says that his eyes were like flames of fire. And out of his mouth came a two-edged sword. And the radiance of his presence was brighter than the sun. You think you know God? You are about to have a real experience. Another encounter. Another move of God. Such as you have never seen before. 
Just when you think you know him, he shows you that you don't know him. John fell as dead. And Jesus had to lay his hand upon him and say, fear not. I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I'm alive forevermore. It don't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter whether it has to deal with your past or your present or your future. Jesus has the power. Jesus has the authority. Jesus has all it takes to handle that in your life and in my life. If you believe it, put your hands together and give God praise for that authority, for that power, and for that blessing. But we see something interesting as we reflect more on the text he begins to address the seven churches and he picks it up beginning with Ephesus which was the first church and he says to them I am he that holds the seven stars in my right hand how many of you know that you are a star in the kingdom of God <laughs> When God promised Abraham's seed to be as the sun on the seashore and the stars of heaven, the stars of heaven was talking about the seed of Abraham, his spiritual seed, which has to do with the church, which has to do with you and I. The sun on the seashore was the natural seed. The stars was the spiritual seed. Those who by faith in Christ Jesus Christ have connected to be the seed of Abraham. They are the stars. You are a star. I came to announce to you that in the scheme of God's plan, you are a superstar. You will shine. You will make a difference. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You were not born to be ordinary. You were not born to do little things. You were born to shine. You were born to make an impact. You were born to make a difference. You are on this earth to influence lives and to change destinies. If you believe it, put your hands together and shout, yeah! He says, I'm the one that holds the seven stars in my right hand. Your life is in his hands. When you are in his hands, nobody can take you out. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that is risen against you, in judgment you will condemn. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When you are in his hand, none can pluck you out of his hand. Jesus Christ is not also holding just the stars in his hand, but the Bible says he walks among the seven candlesticks. Jesus is active in his church. He's here right now. Oh, tell your neighbor he's here. He's here. He's active. Healing. Saving. Delivering. Changing lives. Blessing, making a way where there seems to be no way. God is not an absentee father. He's very involved in the lives of his children. This morning, your life is about to be impacted in a serious way that will reflect to all around you, including your enemies, that Jesus is active in your life. If you believe me, put your hands together and give God praise. The first thing he began to address was the fact that he knows our works. Anybody that is working for God, working in the kingdom, serving in the kingdom, he knows what you are doing. And he is a rewarder of those who seek him. Those who diligently seek him, he rewards. Your reward is coming to you. For everything that you have done and sacrificed for his name's sake, there is a reward coming to you. 
there is a blessing coming to you. Serving the Lord is never in vain. He knows how to reward his own. It doesn't matter how long it takes, your reward will come to you. If you believe it, put your hands together and shout, do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. He says, I know your works and your labor. There's a difference between works and labor. There are some that are working and there are others that are laboring. That means they are serving with every fiber of their being. They are sweating. You can tell that energy is going into what they are doing. He says, I know your works. I know your patience. I know that for my name's sake, if it had not been for my name's sake, you would have done something. But for my name's sake, you've been patient. He knows that also. Because there are some of you, if it is not his grace, you would have killed somebody. You are not ready for me this morning. Can anybody testify and give God praise for his grace and for his mercy and for his love that has just kept you sane? He says, I know your patience. And I know how you can't stand that which is evil. I know you have discernment. I know you have patience. And for my name's sake, you have labored and not fainted. Nevertheless, I have something against you. In spite of your works, your labor, your patience, your discernment, the fact that you have not given up, I still have something against you. Because you have left your first love. He says here that I am no longer your priority. I've blessed you and now the blessing has taken my place. You have put other things where I belong. And I need you to go back to your first love. <laughs> when it comes to God, he is so jealous <laughs> that he's not willing to share his place with anyone in your life. It doesn't matter what you do for him. It's about his place in your heart. Is he still your number one? Is he still your priority? Is he still your king and your lord? Because it's very easy to put something else where he belongs. Abraham's test of Isaac was to find out what was in his heart. The Bible declares that the heart of man is desperately wicked. When it comes to my heart and your heart, if they put it on a screen right now, hey, people will run out of this room. The heart is desperately wicked. The Bible says, who can know it? And so when it comes to the heart, if Jesus is not seated on the throne of our heart, everything else we do means nothing to him. And the reason why a lot of children of God are not seeing the power of God like we ought to is not because he's not powerful, but it's because we haven't put him first place. When you check through his message to the churches, to Smyrna, he said the same thing. He said, I am the first and the last. I am the first and the last. I am the alpha and the omega. I am the beginning and the end. When it comes to putting God first, it releases the power of God in a way we've never seen it before. God told Abraham, 
He said, take your son, your only son, Isaac. I want you to sacrifice him. I want to check you out and see whether your heart is in the blesser or the blessing. Whether your heart is in the gift or the giver of the gift. There are a lot of people who are going to walk in mind-blowing blessings, not just this year, but this decade. There is such a shift coming. There is a transfer of wealth coming. There's a release of power because the church is not going to be raptured weak. The glory of the latter house will be greater than the former. But what is going to make the difference is where he stays in your heart after he's blessed you. After God has blessed you, will you still be in church? Can we still talk to you? Will you still serve like you were serving before your green card came? Hello? When you came fresh, we saw you. We saw how you were in church, how you were worshiping, how you were serving, and now you have a job. You know, pastor, I got a job, I got a job, I got to make some money, you know. And, and so, we don't see you anymore. We pray for the blessing to come, and then when the blessing comes, it takes you away. So, if you were God, what will you do? If you were God, and any time you bless your people, they run away from you, what will you do? Will you still keep blessing them? If what you are giving to them has the potential to destroy them and separate them from you, what will you do? That is the dilemma that God has to deal with. But because he's God and he's love, he still knows how to handle it and still bless us anyway. Can you put your hands together and give God praise? He speaks to the heart of what is the greatest challenge the body of Christ is facing today. And that is whether we put Jesus Christ first place in the church, in our hearts, in our lives. There are churches, not here, but there are churches that when Jesus Christ don't show up for one year, they can't even tell that Jesus didn't come to service. It's so dead religion that when the Holy Ghost leaves, they can't even tell that he's not there. Because we love religion and it's about rituals and it's about fulfilling rules and norms and showing up. But there's a difference between religion and relationship. And what God is looking for is a relationship where he's first place and he's number one in our lives. If you believe it, put your hands together and give God praise. He says, I have one thing against you. And it's because you've left your first love. He said, go back. Repent. And do your first works. Somebody say, first love. First works. How many of you here honestly would love to be in a relationship, either marriage or date, with somebody that will give you just 20%? Talk to me. You are giving 100%. They give you 20%. Will you take that? No, talk to me. Will, will you take that? I think some of you are considering your situation. And you are trying to find out whether what you are putting up, but honest to God, nobody here in their right mind 
will want to be in a relationship where they are giving you 20% whilst you are giving 100%. In the same way, if you and I being human can't take that, why do we expect God to take that? When he's the one that gives us strength, gives us life, gives us breath, heals us when we are sick, blesses us, why should he take that? Tell your neighbor, it's unacceptable. It's non-negotiable. He will not take it. He will not accept it. It doesn't matter how we package it. He doesn't want it. And see, there are people who are stuck. And they don't understand why they are stuck. And they are trying to do so many things. And nothing is moving. Simply because they are not willing to repent and put him where he belongs. But this morning, there is a stirring. There is an awakening. There is a conviction. There is a divine pressure that God is going to put on you to make the adjustment you need to make. And if you believe it's a good thing, put your hands together and give God praise. He said, the way I will know that you have come back to your first love is when you do the first works. How you used to love him. How you used to wake up in the morning and cry out to him and spend time with him. Tears in your eyes. Telling everybody about Jesus Christ and the fact that he's coming back again. And now we have become so sophisticated with all our Greek and our Hebrew and all our deep revelation. We've left our first love. There was something that the mothers before didn't know. They didn't know all the smart words. They didn't have Google. They didn't have the Bible on their, on their phone. But they knew how to get a hold of God. They knew how to move things on their knees. They knew that Jesus was everything. Some of you, you grew up on church. Yeah. Your, your parents dragged you to church. Whether you wanted to go or not, it was non-negotiable. If you live in this house, you will go to church. That's it. Hello? Hello? Can somebody talk to me right now? There is a generation that is dying simply because our priorities has been misplaced. And this morning, God is calling us back to putting him first place. When you wake up in the morning, the first thing you do is to go on your knees, lift up your hands and say thank you. The, the first thing you do is not to go to your cell phone or to turn on the TV or to check what Facebook is saying. Can I talk to somebody this morning? The first thing you do is not what you want to do. Your first hour belongs to him. If you allow him to have the honor of receiving your first hour. He will guide your steps during the day. He will order your steps where you should go. He will deliver you from harm's way. He will deliver you from evil. He will deliver you from all kinds of traps and snares. And go before you and bless you. Your first day of the week belongs to him. Someday is the Lord's day. If you give him the first, he will sanctify the rest. If you want your week to be good, give Sunday to him well. You, you come on time. You come with your worship. You come with your praise. You come with your thanksgiving. You don't come to sleep. Oh, you don't come just to show up. 
You don't come to show your new outfit and how cute you look and how beautiful you are. You come for him. You worship him. You honor him. You serve him. You bless him. It's about him. Can nobody drive you from church? Nobody can drive you away. If somebody breaks your heart, he's not the reason why you came. You didn't come for a husband. You came for him. Oh, you're not ready for me. You, you didn't come for a wife. You came for him. Thank God for having a great pastor, but you didn't come for pastor. So whether pastor is here or not, you show up. You still love, you still serve, you still give. Because you are not trying to impress him. Pastor, there are people when you are here, they are so spiritual. When you are not around, hey! I know those people are not here. I know they are not here. But he is watching everything we are doing. And he will reward us accordingly. You see, Pastor Greg, when it comes to God, the reason why a lot of his children don't see his power is because we don't know how to handle him. We don't know how to make him feel good. We don't know how to entertain him. We, we don't know how to deal with him. We don't understand the protocols. We try to put him in a box. We try to fit him with other things, but he is in a class of his own. The Bible says he sits upon the circles of the earth and he does what he pleases. Your first hour of your day belongs to God. Your first day of the week belongs to God. Your best, your finest, your first belongs to God. Including your talents, including your gifts, including your skills, including your resources, including your salary. It belongs to him. Oh, Jesus. It breaks my heart that we put doctors first before him when he's actually our healer. That Friday night service was so powerful. That teaching was so life transforming. Pastor yes, yes, yes. Greg, when people go to a doctor, they believe what the doctor says more than what the word of God is saying. Yes. We believe the banker more than what the word of God is saying. We believe the lawyer more than what the word of God is saying. We believe professionals more than what God is saying. But said, there's a difference between fact and truth. What they are telling us is facts. What God tells us is truth. And it is only the truth that can set you free. Are you ready for some freedom this morning? Are you ready to walk in the freedom? Of being a child of God, of being blessed by God, of being favored by God. If you believe it, put your hands together and give Him the highest praise. That which comes first belongs to God, He has the right to demand for it. It belongs to him. It's his. If you don't give it to him, he will fight you for it. He will destroy it. Come with me to Exodus 13, verse 2. 
Hey, Zalabadu Sakaya. He said, Sanctify unto me all the world. Somebody say, Firstborn. Whatsoever openeth the womb among the children of Israel, both man and beast, it is mine. He said, I have the right as the creator of all things to demand that which is first. To demand that which is best. Whether it's an animal or a human being, anything that comes first is mine. The first hour is mine. The first day of the week is mine. The first month of the year is mine. The first quarter is mine. That which is first is mine. If you give it to me, that word sanctify means you consecrate it. You set it apart. You dedicate it. You hallow it. He said, set it apart unto me. Because I have the right to enjoy what is first and what is best. The reason why a lot of people, and yesterday we did some very serious damage in the spirit concerning finances. But this morning, God showed me something, Pastor Greg. And a lot of ancient strongholds are about to be broken. A lot, hear me, you have not seen prosperity like God wants you to see it. You have not seen blessing like God wants you to see it. And for some of you, God is going to confer such dominion over your life that you will be a master in your field. You will not just be normal. You will not just be average. You will be supernatural. You will operate on a totally different frequency. Nobody can compete with you. Nobody can overtake you. Nobody can move you from where God has placed you and established you. You are on your way to number one. You are on your way to your best place. You were born to be an eagle. You were born to make a difference. You were born to shine like the stars of heaven. And by the power of putting God first, you are moving from where you are to where you really belong. Where God has always wanted and ordained for you to be. Will you rise up this morning and begin to talk to God and say, God, I am ready for what you have for me. I am ready to move up. I am tired of being down. You said I'm the first and not the last. You said I'm the head and not the tail. You said I'm above and not beneath. I am ready. I am ready. I am ready. Will you lift your voice? and clap your hands and talk to God and cry out in the name of Jesus. All over this place. Begin to plead the blood. 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 Robo Santa. Lema Taka. Lema Sutaka. Rabade Mukandeka. Lema Toko Sondikai. Lema Dabatuka Kai. Rabade Kastene. In the Kustapa. In Amade de Basula Badeka Kaya. In the name of Jesus. Hear me? God wants to move you to number one. God wants to move you to the top. God wants to put you first. Your family first. Your children first. Some of you, you are about to be number one in your family. You are about to be number one on your job. You are about to be number one in your field. You cannot even say amen. Your ministry is going to number one. Your ministry will be excellent in all the city of Miami. Everybody will know about the tabernacle of glory. You are going high. You are rising up. You are catching up. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But it comes with the simple key of putting God first. Making him number one. 
And, and Pastor Greg, one of the most dangerous areas the enemy has held God's people bound is in their finances. And we pray and we prophesy and we speak to people. But you see, come with me to 1 Kings 17. There is a principle there. And Elijah said unto her, fear not. How many of you have heard fear not? And yet what you feared happened. The reason is because, you see, we, we prophesy to people not to fear. But we are not bold to tell them to give God first. He said, fear not. Go and do as you have said. But make me thereof a little cake first. First. Somebody say first. Somebody say first. Listen, if you are an attorney, before you give your best to your company, give your best to the church first. If you are into IT, if you are into real estate, whatever your career is, teacher, name it, give the church your first, your best, and you will see what God will do with you. He said, give me first. Give to the kingdom first. Let that be your principle of always giving your best and your first to God. And if you can do that, you will always be number one. Nobody can beat you ever in what you do. That person is not born yet. I said that person is not born yet. They cannot compete with you and win. It's a lie. Because God himself will fight them. Come with me to Jeremiah 2 verse 3. Let me show you. That boss you can't deal with. God will deal with them. That competition that is driving you crazy. God will deal with it. He said Israel was holiness unto the Lord. And the first fruit of his increase. He said, because Israel is my first fruit. Because Israel understands the principle of putting me first. Making me number one. He said, all that devour him shall offend. Evil, disaster shall overtake them. Anybody that messes with you when you put God first. Evil will overtake them. You don't have to open your mouth. Disaster will overtake them. Calamity will overtake them. I didn't say it. God said it. I see your stolen goods being returned. I see God opening doors for you that no man can shut. I see God lifting you up. Promoting and elevating you. Exalting the horns. Are you hearing me of your salvation? This morning, I want to challenge as many of you that can honor the Lord with your first fruit and your best. Your first is what God blessed you with first that is best in your life. Whether it's your first month salary or your first week salary or your first income, your first and your best to say, God, I want to honor you this way. And listen to me. God said to me when I was coming, he said, tell my people that they shouldn't give me what is left. They should always give me what is first. If you from today can make that covenant to God, that before I pay my bills, before I do anything with my money, the first thing I'm going to do is to honor the Lord, is to bless him first, is to give him the best and the first. You will see the glory of God. But this is just the icing 
I haven't even started yet because some of you, you've been through struggles and chains of bondage and humiliation and shame and indebtedness and insufficiency and it's like no matter how hard you work no matter how hard you pray it doesn't seem to be moving but God wants to destroy that chain God wants to break that cycle God wants to prove to you that the silver and the gold is his this is not this is beyond giving and receiving this is giving your best to God. Genesis 4.4. Abel shows us a principle there. And I'm done. You will never struggle ever again in your life. Write it down today. Because he cannot lie. It's impossible. I know some of you have had things. And it didn't work the way you expected it. But this one, God's integrity is on the line. And Abel, he also brought the firstlings of his flock and the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. The Lord had respect. Do you know that there are things we give to God and he doesn't even see it? Because you see, if it doesn't move you, tell your neighbor, if it doesn't move you, it doesn't move him also. If it doesn't move you, how do you expect it to move him? What moves him is not the amount, it's the principle. It's the heart. It's the passion. It's the statement it makes that you are number one. That you are my best. That you are still the love of my life. That you are still the lover of my soul. That I still love you more than all these things. You have blessed me, but I still love you. You have prospered me, but I still love you. You have made a way for me, but I still, I still have this thing in my heart that when I come into your presence, it's like I'm nothing and you are everything. Will you lift up your hands right now and just thank him and just love on him? Not just with our mouth, but also with our substance, with our talent with our skills, with our gifts, with our resources, with everything we are and ever hope to be. Will you worship him this morning? Mako Sapa, Lekatabaha, Masei Tekete, Marika Sutakandeba, Maradiviku Sande, Oromo Sambaritatan, Amalu Akeri Astukaya, can you ask him to take first place? Can you ask him to be number one again? Can you call upon him right now? Maluka Sende, let no man take his place. Let no woman take his place. Let no idol take his place. Let no money take his place. Mako Sende Baha'i. Rabba Baba Baba Basu Teke. Metelebe Zutakai. Neki Sumbra Dikata Atelema Zula Kaya Mayanda Redebo Sotoko Oroba Baba Kapanda Kai Oh Lord, sit a throne Sit a throne at the heart of our worship Malakaseli Itakai Baradadadada Basete Kete Oroba Baba 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 we break the power of every witchcraft, of every sorcery, of every blindness, of every wickedness, of every robbery, of poverty. We destroy the power of every poverty. We release abundance. We release overflow. We release the blessing. We release more than enough. We release the outpouring. In the name of Jesus. All of our sacrifice. All of our displays. Will you lift up our king? Will you honor our king? Will you exalt our king? He is worthy. He is worthy. You are worthy. There is no king. There is no God. There is no master like you. Da 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 da
There is healing in the house. There is deliverance in the house. There is joy in the house. There is peace in the house. He is the king of glory. My God, say, Shekinah app. Téléchargez-le.